another piano rule. I always try to octave it because that sounds great. That sounds like a little bass fill at the end. I don't hate that. Um, and then here, oh, gotta be careful with this. Let's just drag that onto the grid. That doesn't cut off when I make it nice and neat. All right, so. up a bit just so I can hear it. I think something arpeggiated would be kind of cool. I don't know if it should be on the piano. Should we try a synth? Synth. What do we like? What do we like? Let's do, you know, let's just stick to serum. Serum's pretty sick. Just so loud. Let's just use a patch for now. So loud. Work. All right, and let's just uh, see if we can compose something for this. sound I like this road If I like that's doing think you're recording you do better that's why i like your retrospective record you're sick this we should probably quantize because we're not actually matching anything get rid of that last note because that was terrible
just need some EQing. Badly. All right. an octave higher maybe we should just octave it as we always do because that's the law and what's the other law that's right put black hole on it actually maybe we should do uh, Valhalla on this one I'm gonna do some shimmer. Oh, we love Valhalla, don't we? I'm gonna pan this over to the side because I'm gonna see if I can get another thing going. That sounds great. You really gotta watch out with this stuff because it'll just eat up your entire mix if you're not careful, so. We're gonna we're gonna go a little bit too aggressive on this today because because I'm in charge and I get to do whatever I want. So. Let's see if we add. You know what? Let's try Diva. Good old diva. Or let's try a free synth. Synth one. Not to be confused with silent one, which is also really sick. And sometimes when you're when you're doing stuff in the mix, you really don't need you can kind of get away with some pretty Traditionally crappy sounds. <laughs> Not trying to push it, but dude, reverb fixes everything. Let's try some Echo Boy on this, actually. Echo Boy. Get the ping pong. Get Valhalla, vintage verb for this one. Let's see how that sounds. So that sounds not very good. If this doesn't work, we'll break out Omnisphere because Omnisphere fixes everything always. Should break out Omnisphere. It's a solution to all problems. Um, big problem with Omnisphere is that, and this is a silly thing to complain about, but there are way too many, way too many presets on this. Why do I feel like that's gonna be really sick right off of that? <laughs> Anyways, there's some some LFO there that's like kind of messing with the uh, volume, which I don't.
kind of dig that. Omnisphere is also like the loudest thing ever, so. See if adding the piano makes it too much. Oh, we have lost the sustain. We don't want to do that. Oh, I know why we lost the sustain because I cut off the beginning. Yeah, these are the things you got to watch out for. All right. Still not liking that. Still not quite right. Let's go with the one I always use for everything. Sometimes you just know it works. Oh, whoops. I do this. Let's try opening up the hi-hat on this because now we've built this into a long section. Let's let's try to try to ramp up the energy up to the next part. Now we don't need that hit there. We actually, press, probably just symbol. pretty well. Just kind of seeing something. Sometimes I get carried away with the, the MIDI stuff, but sometimes it's kind of sick. Like that right there. It's not a terrible place to be, is it? In fact, I could probably... sounds Let's move that to a ride symbol see how that sounds Ride symbol program doesn't translate exactly, obviously, but kind of gets us the idea that we. a little bit and you'll see I'm getting very ADD right now but this is sometimes how it goes just kind of follow where the ideas are going 
Hey, you know what? You know, it'd be good here. Some pedal checks. One thirty. You could kind of do quarters or eight notes. Doesn't really. It just depends on the intensity you want. Get some ghost notes in there. with how upbeat this is maybe we do double up on that see how drastically you can change the feel of these parts just by kind of shifting stuff I may just be playing around with this we don't need that Actually, we do this kind of upbeat or this kind of busy first half, kind of straighten it out in the second half, really straighten it out. So we do like 105. back to hi-hats on this Get a nice heavy kind of feel in fact let's stack these under and let's do this let's make these flame a little bit it's a bit extreme there but when you have the kick and snare directly on top of each other, they just, first of all, drummer can't actually play it like that. And it just kind of sounds like one drum, so let's try this. Mm. 
here we can do like a bunch of symbols because we have all the symbols on this kit. It's kind of great. So again, this is just kind of like messing around. This is like the kind of thing where I would do this and then I'd have this as a bridge later. Kind of expand on it. You'll see, like, this is one of the more, like, motif-based ideas I've worked on. I'd try to probably introduce more sections if I was going to develop this into a whole thing right now. But this led to this arpeggio here. back here. I wonder if that should go up an octave. Why do we not have sustain on this? We fix that as well. filling in all the gaps I forgot to fill in earlier because I got distracted. That's all good. So that's it. do that with one of the sides here. Now that we have more stuff reinforcing it. Let's get some delay going on here. Maybe some reverb. hear the rest of the song. Simple. 
one too. I see what's happening. My favorite thing ever on delay, which is modulation. Nope, that's not it. Was it time number two? That's all. Actually, turn the notes. So my, this guitar is not perfectly intonated. All right, let's try that again. Take over this other rhythm side. thing I mean technically these two notes could hang the whole time
double track there. sounds now this is a little bit guilty of something that I always fall into is doing way too many layers and not really knowing what the focus is but the good thing is you can always delete them so sometimes I have like way too many things like this has way too many things going on Yeah, all that time I spent there might be kind of wasted. It's there in that last section, but I think this sometimes you have to kind of be honest and see if you're overdoing it. So let's listen to this. Let's see where we're at. bridge E section there is not quite right on that second half of saying missing but I think we can fix that but sake of doing layers here. That could be a layer. Anyways... I think we're like starting to get pretty good sense. I, I think there should be another part that's like fundamentally different because we are writing this motif a lot. This may be where we call it because you kind of see how I follow a thread here. So I think the one thing that you should keep in mind is you can see me going nuts with the layers here. You can see me sort of moving stuff around experimenting. 
and that's great. You're sort of adding and adding and adding. Um, and sometimes you'll start off with something. This happens to me a lot. You've even sort of seen it happen here. I was kind of going with this section and it sort of led to a whole other thing, which then is what I kept. And I sort of deleted that for now or muted it for now. I think it's very valuable to layer up. You know, you have the tools to do that, but it's also very important to figure out what you're trying to do. It's not about getting as many possible things. Sometimes stripping back is how you make things sound bigger and more cohesive. So, and this is actually a lesson I've had to learn over time. It's not something I was naturally good at. I was, I was like, oh, all the tracks, great, there's more stuff. Um, but as they say, sometimes less is more, unless you're Ingve, because he says uh, more is definitely more. But I think that taking away parts strategically and sort of listening in the context of the whole thing, like I think if you listen back, when we were listening back and that wasn't there, definitely flowed. It definitely made more sense. Everything made a lot more sense. And that's where you have to take a step back and be a bit honest with yourself. Like, do I need this? Do I? And I may listen to this some more and actually take even more stuff out. Let's say that there were going to be vocals over this, which is definitely, this kind of thing is definitely written with a lot of space so that vocals can do their thing. There might actually be too much going on with some of these layers. So it's all right to write them. And sometimes you'll find they, in, they inspire entirely other sections. Like we got this kind of weird bridge section out of it, out of doing the, the synthy stuff. But you know, I think, for example, I'm looking at this, I'm like, I don't know how necessary that is. So in the final song, if that really isn't working, I have to be good with cutting that. It shouldn't just be there because I spent the time on it. And that's something that you really should pay attention to when you are writing this kind of stuff. Uh, you might have to learn that just by doing it because it's very tempting when you write anything. It's like, oh, it's a piece of me, I'm kind of deleting a piece of me. But uh, if you can manage to take that step back and maybe take some time away, that can always help. And that is probably what I'm going to do right now is kind of leave this where it is uh, and see where I'm at, what's how I feel about this. Because right now I'm so invested in everything. It's kind of hard to see the big picture. And seeing the big picture is sometimes what you need to do. So take some time away. And you might find that when you come back to it, it inspires even more ideas. Another thing I'd like you to take away from this is how important a melody line is and how important context is. What I mean is none of these individual parts are really that special. If you listen to this, this is really the melody. There's nothing to it, right? That sounds very beautiful, but this is literally going the entire song in some form. And that's how I'm creating the motif. And it's better for those things to be simple. It's a lot better for those things to be simple because it opens up space for interpretation. At the same time, you can see how much I was using that and playing around with the, the chord progression. And keep in mind, this is from something I was literally just jamming on last night just uh, with some pedals. I had no idea what was going to happen. And if you listen to these, these progressions... It doesn't sound like anything. I mean... If you just came to me and you were like, oh, how's this for a riff? I'd be like, I don't know about that. And without hearing everything in context, it can be tough to, to see the value in it, right? But as you hear those come together, it all of a sudden makes a lot more sense. That's all pretty traditional. You get that, that's kind of out of left field, right? And this actually isn't even repeating the whole way. So I might have gone kind of nuts with the, the chord changes. I don't think it sounds bad, though. I think it's kind of cool. It'll make it kind of unique with kind of a traditional feel as well. Like, this doesn't sound super progressive. It doesn't sound super adventurous. But the actual chord changes are making it a lot more adventurous than, than you might think. And it rides that line, which I like, where it sounds like it has substance without sounding like it's trying too hard to my ears. And it's not just stuffing a whole bunch of notes in to sound a bit different or, or impress. Um, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but kind of from where I'm starting or where, kind of from where I started with just that little melody, I was able to get all this going. And if anything, it's a good little exercise. And maybe you'll get a cool song out of it. Maybe you won't, but it's kind of honing your tools and hopefully trying a little bit of a different approach. I hope you see from what I've done here, how many different ways I could have gone. There was a lot of times where I was doing what I call following a thread where 
I just had an inkling. I heard a little thing. I'm like, oh, let's go with that and kind of ditch what I'm doing uh, and, and explore that. But it could have gone a million different ways. And this is where your sound comes out. Your choices kind of define what makes this sound like you. So I encourage you to sort of follow that instinct and explore that. This may never become a thing. Maybe it will become a thing. Maybe it will become a section. Maybe part of this will become something and it'll completely transform the next time I look at it. I have no idea yet. And that's half the fun right there. So just keep that in mind. And you see how much changing a beat like this sounds different from... Sounds different from... So you have all of these different directions that you can explore. And I encourage you to do that. Don't try to get sort of stuck in a hole with one idea. So that song came out completely different from what I think I envisioned. I'm not even entirely sure what I envisioned. I was genuinely following a thread and just kind of losing myself at the moment and seeing what happens. And that's kind of fun. And I feel like I developed quite a few ideas and sections that go together. Now, when I'm writing, especially with this style where I'm thinking there probably should be vocals on this, I will kind of stop at this point and work with the vocalist because things that I think may be a chorus or a verse or whatever may not actually work out that way. And this song would really need vocals to be complete. So at this point, that's what I would do. I would start working with my vocalist and get those ideas down and see where that takes this idea and then maybe finish it up from there. All right, that's enough of that. Des and I are going to get some ice cream. See you guys.